Welcome to the Totally Awesome Fishing Show. Now we keep getting asked all the time, please, can we have more and more carp fishing tips? So we decided to go down to a fishery in Gloucestershire called Hawker. Um, it's a new venue for me, I've never been there before. Dad's been there, he's done a few videos. Um, we went to speak to a guy who's seriously onto his carp. He's catching them at the moment, that carp that have never been caught before. Let's go and have a chat with him. Graham Carter is a specialist carp angler. He fishes here regularly, obviously puts the hours in, and he's got some interesting tips and techniques that might just help you catch the extra carp. Okay, the, the two rigs that have accounted for most of my fish on the venue is, uh, first of all, we just got a standard chod. Um, I've done two different things to the chod. One, taking a tip from Jim Shelley, and that's just to put a loop in the bottom of the chod. Um, the fish fishing the chod very tight to the bottom, so it'll only be popped up about an inch or so. Um, this seems to be working on the hard spots. If I'm fishing in weed, I would fish the chod section, maybe anything up to three, three and a half inches. Um, going down further on the chod, just to try and make sure I land the fish when I do hook them, I've just got the lead on a small boom section, just so I can keep the lead away from the fish's mouth. This stops the lead bouncing around and pulling the hook out, which really it's a, it's a hinge stiff rig, but it's all intents and purposes. It's a choddy on a boom. And um, it's a small stiff section, approximately about five inches there, fished helicopter style. But again, I'm fishing on a hard spot, so I've got a very small chod section of about an inch just to pop it up. And uh, a little bit of putty down the line just to pin everything to the deck nice and hard. The leaders I'm using are just the safe zone leaders. Um, just I, I've got confidence in them. Um, they've got wide variation of colours, so I know I can always match it to the environment I'm in. Um, and I've had no problems with them. They've also got the putty in them, so they're pinned down nicely. I know that everything's nicely on the deck. As explained, when I do the chod section, um, again, I'm, I'm doing ev tying everything with crimps here, just to keep everything nice and uh, neat but the crimp section on the bottom of the chard, I'm just putting a nice loop in there, which just uh, aids the mobility. Um, I can get movement on the rig before I even ask in the swivel to do any movement at all, which um, it's, a, it's a tip that I've nicked from Jim Shelley, but it seems to be working for me. Um, then just a screw, which I use for fixing the boilies on. Nice, quick, easy method, and I've, I've not had any fall off. Yep. First of all, it's the, the screw section just to put the pop-up on. Um, just push it in slightly first of all, screw it on. It's a nice, quick, easy system. It allows me to change quickly without having to tie anything. That's screwed right down and as you can see, the hook will be holding right on the boilie. So as soon as the boilie is in the fish's mouth, I've got the hook on the bottom lip which is where I want to nail it. Um, it's very hard to eject because of the stiff section. The fish can't blow it back out easily, so it keeps a boilie in the mouth where you want it. All right, before I cast them out. Um, love these goos, all different ones. This is one I've had a bit of success on. It's just a garlic one. And that'll stay on there for some time, will it? Yeah, that'll leak off and ooze a little trail down to my bait. Hopefully it'll pull a nice big lump onto it. So no boilie at all, just a, a straight pop-up? Straight pop-up, yeah. Okay, where I'm fishing, I'm fishing across a few weed beds, which makes uh, presentation a, a little bit difficult. Um, I want everything pinned down, so what I find with, with the leaders, you've got the tungsten infused leader, that'll pin the leader down. I've got the three pieces of putty on the rig to actually pin that down. You, you just want to keep the rig as tight on the floor as you can so the fish can't see the line at all. As soon as they see the line, it'll spook them. Um, I found also when I'm casting over the weed beds, if I sink the line from the hook bait end, um, it just helps with the presentation a bit. Right, I'm fishing 70 yards out on the mark, so 
it's 17 and a half turns. Um, I'd say I haven't marked my line, I just like to, if I do it by hand each time, I'm only casting once or twice a day, if I want to tweak it by a few inches, I've, I've got it, I am, I can do it. So, mark out 17 wraps. Two poles are spaced apart at a given length, and then the line is wound backwards and forwards between those two poles to measure out exactly where you want to put that bait. Then you clip the line into the edge of the spool so you can't possibly overcast into the bushes. Right, I'm clipped up at 70 yards, so just keep your rod high, reel it back onto the reel, and I'm ready to chuck it out. Um, I'm casting across to the far bank, 70 yards, just underneath the trees, so let's see if we can get it there. Well, we couldn't go all that way, drive all that way for an interview just to see that rig and that tackle, could we? No, but guys, you need to check this out. The carp he's caught is stunning. Let's have a look. Yeah, well, I, I lost a fish last night. Um, just pulled on me, just, just snapped me straight away. Caught past five this morning. I've, I've had a nice run. The fish has just peeled off with lines screaming. Um, weeded me twice on the way in, and it's taken me an hour to get in there. Let's have a look at the lump and show you it, I suppose. And you're fishing the far bank, were you? I'm, I'm fishing the far bank, 70 yards out, underneath the trees on the opposite side. Well, it looks substantial there. Eh? Yes, it's a nice fish. It's not the biggest. And you think it might be one that's never been caught before? It's that's... possibly one that's not been caught. I don't think I've seen it before. But I'll have to do a check with the other lads just to see if... You do a photo, check on scales yeah. and stuff like that, don't you? It'd be if, if it is another one original that hasn't come out, that'd be my fourth one that nobody's had. Oh yeah, that's a nice one. Oh yeah. <laughs> that is... It's a proper fish, That's a it? proper fish, isn't it? Eh? That's worth waking up for, my goodness me. Look at that tail on it, folks. Absolutely. A paddle. Stunning, isn't it? Yeah, that's a nice looking fish. Would that be one of the leanies, do you think? Or No, that's that's got to be a Sutton. A Sutton, yeah? It, you think so? Yeah. Yeah, looking looking at it, I think it's a Sutton. There's, there's a lot of fish in here that look like this. Yeah. I'll lift him up and uh, show yeah. the camera if you want. Yeah, absolutely. That is a, that is a spanker. It's almost when we say you don't need to weigh that. <laughs> it's a nice big fish. To yeah. be honest, like... I've only recently bought a set of scales to keep an eye on the weights of the fish here. I never generally weigh my fish. I'm not bothered about the weights. I know what you mean. I know exactly that. I know. Oh, yeah, that's a beauty, isn't it? Look at the size of the cake hole on it, and you wonder what they can get in their mouth. Yeah. That is. That's a solid fish, that isn't That is it? a really nice fish, yeah. That's the other side of 20, isn't it? Yeah. That's got to be the other side of it's, 20. There's worse ways to be woken up in the morning, let's go there. In there, On yeah. the scales and have a look. Yeah, see what he goes. I haven't zeroed the scales for the waist sling, so... Um, sure, it's got to be, it's got, it's got, it's got to be shading the other side of 20, I'd say. A tough venue, you'd say, this one. It's not, not an easy water, is it? It's No, no, it's not for the faint-hearted. You have to earn your fish out of here. What does that say? I can't see, I've got my readers on. You've got about 25.6 on that. So what do they go to in here? What sort of size do they think they go to? Well, the, the biggest I think they've had at the moment is 35, but there's bigger in here. It's bigger than 35 in it? Yeah. 35 common is the biggest that's come out. Be nice fish, nice to see it go back, but very nice to see a fish that's never been named before.
Okay, um, th th that's the rig that accounted for the fish. It's just a short, uh, stiff, hinged rig, hinged, stiff rig even. Um, just a short trod boom sitting fairly low in the water, which is how I do everything that I've come out of here has, has come to pop up, so I've nothing on the bottom bait. But yeah, an easy rig to tie really, once you get used to tying the trod, but it does the business. So you're doing no boilies, just a straight pop up? Yep. Really? Yeah. What, what what would you feed? Not to, you don't have to tell us the flavours, but what would you feed I'll here? Show you. I feed a combination of the two boilies. Um, cell because it goes into every water known to man. There's three different sizes in there: tens, fifteens, and eighteens. And um, what this one actually fell to was Equinox pop up. And uh, that's the Equinox. I've been feeding just fifteen mils of those though. So you're feeding those. Yeah. And it looks like your your man there looks like he'd have one of those in a yeah, in a flash. Definitely. There you go, it's good enough for the dog, it's they, good enough for the be, fish. It'd be easier to catch them fish, they would. Wouldn't they? Yes, yeah. So you're feeding that, will you have the same colour pop-up or would you contrast it and have say a white pop-up? What would I, you I was fishing the same colour pop-up, I'll show you the pop-ups I'll be using. That's just the pop-ups, just with a little bit of oh, equinox solution in there, just to um, soak into the boilies. They come like that, you know. Yes. You don't, you don't have to colour them or anything no, like that. No. And that's the cell pop-ups I've been using, just again with a little bit of cell liquid in there, just for a bait boost. And that does it. That does yeah. the job. Did the business last night, anyway, or this yeah. morning, early this yeah. morning. Happy days. Good fish. Well done. Well, all that talk about tackle got us really going. It lit the fires under our underpants, <laughs> and we wanted to go fishing. Well, we're not intelligent to use rigs like that, but we have a couple of rigs we want to show you, and we know they work. They're old school, aren't they? Yeah, they're pretty old school. I mean, you can't get more old school than Sweet Corners bait. And honestly, guys, it's probably the most simple rig I've ever fished with. We are simple. Let's check them out. Well, guys, this is what I'm going to be using. All it is is simplicity at its best. It's got my main line here that's kind of 12 pounds straight through from the rod coming down to my size eight hook. All I've got then is about six inches before that hook is I've pinched on a little BB shot just to help weight the sweet corn down. Then all I'm gonna do is just three grains of sweet corn. I like to use, there's the soft part of the corn there, I like to use the kind of hard part in the head and just nick it, you don't have to kind of bury it on the hook, just roll that round there. That's one, nick it in the edge because it gives you more space to fit three grains of corn on. And third one there, and I always make sure it just goes around the top of the loop of the hook, just there. So they're nicely covered, you can't really see that point. Um, and it's that that is as simple as it gets, guys. Well, although I'm old school, I had to take some of those tips into consideration. I'm not completely stupid. I'm gonna be using this. It's a straight inline lead there, as you can see. And the swivel just pops up and locks inside like a little rubber sleeve, I think it is in there, so that the fish, should that break off and get snagged, breaks free, pulls free, everything comes off, fish is happy, probably the angler's not, he's lost the fish and a lead. Going to use my little braided link there, I'm going to be using two grains of sweet corn, but there's something different. One is a fake sweet corn, can you tell the difference? It's on a hair rig, people did say, Graham is always a bit of a faker. But there you go, I kind of know what they say about me. I've got one grain of corn there, which is proper sweet corn, and I've got a piece of plastic corn there, with a little stop there, and that's all I'm gonna be using, and that's gonna be cast on the bottom, and I'm gonna hopefully, fingers crossed, get a bent rod sooner or later. I left Mike to get set up and the main lake cart swim had disappeared off to do my own thing. The trouble with me is I get bored really quickly and I do stupid things like start fishing and then wonder, oh, I haven't put the landing net together yet. So there's a chance I might lose this fish, but you never know, we could get some of that totally awesome luck with us and it stays on. Yet yeah, here we go. Not a monster, but listen, hey, it's better than a blank. Nice common carp there. It's all about fun. Fishing should be fun. You shouldn't set yourself too high a target 
on each day. That way, you won't be disappointed, will you? Yeah, it didn't take me too long to get hooked up again. I mean, usually when I can see fish, I can actually judge the reaction they have to the bait. I know whether to change the bait or change the rig. And that walk up at Hawcock is absolutely tap water clear. This time, not a carp. A nice tench, slide it in the net. What a result, and I actually did have some of those taking floaters off the top. I could not hook them to save my life, but I got these on sweet corn and worm. Well guys, I had that small carp and that tench by just moving while Mike is trying to decide, you know, exactly where the gravel bars are. I've been waiting for Lee to come around so he tells me where to cast. But I've come to the other lake and this is what it's all about. It's pretty dead on the big lake at the moment so I see no reason sort of sitting there. There's lots of anglers way better than me, carp guys, that are sitting there, nothing's happening. So I've just come to this other lake and where I've had these fish, I'm straining my eyes thinking, do you know what, I'm sure that's tench that are taking these floaters off the surface that I keep missing, indeed they are. So I've put some screttings, little pellets down, four mil ones, close in, not even half a rod length out, came back, man alive, there's fish everywhere. So I'm geared up, I've got the head cam here, on the back of my head ready, hat balanced on the top, and I'm hoping, providing the birds don't find it, that they move in again, and I've got a chance of catching a fish. It is pretty black with them, I'm telling you. Look guys, can you see what's just happened to me? How stupid I can be. A gust of wind has blown my unhooking mat right over the swim. Am I going to get it back? I mean, there it is. It's drifting along like somebody on a lilo and I've got my fishing rod. No, the hook's now gone up the tree. So I've spooked the fish, lost my unhooking mat and got caught up a tree. Dear, oh dear, when will it get better? We got one on guys, they eventually came back. It took about 15 minutes for them to settle down again. And uh, there's tension amongst the carp there as well. But they're browsing, you know, and that's what we were just talking about, that they might be slower feeding in the big lake if that's the way they're feeding. Might even be a sort of single, one single bait standing out for something else. Worth the move and just worth putting that little bit of bait in, it's got me off to a start. Where he goes. Had your rod. Sorry, mate. Oh, you're on again. Here you We've gone from one to the other. I heard them dow come. I didn't ever think myself. Oh, I think he's come off. Really? No, yeah. Still there, is he? Yep. That's what you get for helping out the Totally Awesome Fishing Show. You see, you get that little bit of luck. Yeah. Let's hope he's still on. I think he's off. Oh, no, he ain't. He's still there. He's coming towards me. In the net, He's in. Oh, 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 that was lucky, wasn't it? <laughs> so you, you've done, just to, just to tell the folks, you've actually done two PBs. This is your smallest one you've caught for me, is that right? Yeah, it is, yeah. And then you've had, a, what was it, the other one? Uh, 21 pound 6 ounce. Uh, 21 6, so you've had a, P a PB as well? Yeah. Where are you going, mate? Brilliant, well done. Yes, yeah. yeah, folks. We're on again.
There we go guys, nice car. There we go guys, no monster but another fish, one tench, four carp and well worth a little move and just looking at those extra little places where the fish might feed. Let's get it back, go and join Mike, hopefully for a night's sleep. <music> Well people, into a fish now. First fish on this lake. First fish of the uh, session for me, actually. Lost two last night. We've come down to the smaller lake. And I think I've got myself a small car. It's going well there. There we go, a fine mirror carp. Got on double corn, just free lining corn with a little split shot. And uh, put up a really good scrap actually. It's nice to actually get fish on the bank for me. And lovely dark markings on this one. Nice scales on the top as well. So hopefully, you know, the light's still pretty low so it should be quite good. There's still tension in the, in the swim as well that I'm feeding. It'd be lovely to get a tench. But we'll get this one back and get straight back out there. Well, five minutes in again. Triple corn again, and I think I might be onto a tench this time. I'm not sure. I think it's a tench. Could be my first tench, actually, which would be awesome. Either way, I'm chuffed. Well, there we go, people. My first tench here at Hawkett. Fine, fine looking fish. Really, really good scrap. Good paddle on that tail. Really good fight. I'm on my normal carp gear that I'd be using for uh, the bigger carp. It's just the same same sort of gear but different principle just going a bit lighter triple corn as i say real small hook and it's just starting to rain so we'll get this one back get the cameras covered up and then uh, hopefully get some more well no sooner did i put that other tench back that i'm straight into another on the triple corn i think the tip is really just keep baiting up we're using the sort of four mil pellets and it's getting them really confident and it's very similar to the kind of big carp fishing really. You just get them confident feeding on those pellets, but it's not actually filling them up. It's just a tasty meal. It's like us eating Rice Krispies really. And then suddenly triple corn drop down about two, a foot, two foot in front of the nose. He's in. Lovely clear water here. We've just got a small gravel patch that we're just putting these pellets out in. So we can see the fish, got the polarizing glasses. And this is better than the last tent, that's for sure. That's not far, four pounds. Yeah. We're definitely talking a little PB here, I feel. This, yeah, I've first ever tench and I'm now breaking the yeah. PBs. This I, is definitely better than the last Yeah, that's, one. A, that's a four pound tench, that one. This, let's see where he's hooked. Well, it's a bit noisy because they're mowing the lawns here in these conditions, but that's got to be my PB tench. We reckon, what, three and a half, four pounds? No, bigger than that, about four, 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 eight. Yeah, it's a lovely looking tench. I love the kind of, orange red eye um, really nice this one um, again took the triple corn and I'm starting to get really into it to be honest it's nice to be catching I reckon X4 I'll give that four and a half pounds that That's a I don't tent. think it'll quite go five pounds oh, I'm enjoying it nevertheless great fish be nice if the lawnmower stopped but yeah. it's, not, it's not going to it's a <laughs> lack of totally awesome. main, everything is going yeah. yes, that's, we'll get, get this one back I certainly enjoying this I've never done visual fishing for tench before it's all a new experience for me, but really enjoying it. Can't really beat visual fishing for carp or for tench. But we'll get this one back, and then I'm going to chuck a few more pellets in that swim, keep them feeding. I can see the fish over there now still feeding big dark shadows. There's a few big fish in there as well. I'm going to try and single out maybe one or two of the bigger ones now. Let's get it back. Well, people I'm in again, tench number three now. They've got a bit finicky. I think the light changed 
and uh, they were getting a bit bit wary really so um, I didn't cast out for a while let them get a bit more confident with those pellets and after about I don't know five ten minutes then I dropped my bait in again just at one slowly cruising by again about a foot in front of its nose letting it sink not touching it don't tweak the line at all and the triple corn works again and it's another nice tench can't tench another tench yeah there's somebody who has never had a tench it's before Oh, well, there we go, number three in the bag. I've only been fishing probably just about an hour now, I'd say. But, um, yeah, it's kind of against all conditions. Visually, fishing for tench is, is something new, completely new to me. But um, I think Dad used to say that... What was it he used to say? I say you're lucky. You're, you're <laughs> lucky, yeah. You just you Broad daylight. Really get, I mean, broad daylight, very ten, clear conditions. Yeah, ten o'clock in the morning and be able to visually watch them suck the bait in. It's yeah. pretty exciting stuff. Oh, it's awesome. It and it's rare. It's, it's pretty totally rare. awesome. That's what it is. And nice fish too. Yeah, on the triple corn. If they get a bit uh, finicky, leave them alone for a while. Build them up confidence again with the pellets. And then just chuck your sweet corn back in there. Just free lining corn. Awesome stuff. Let's get it back. Four mil pellets on the bottom? Four mil, yeah. Just four mil pellets, getting them munching and uh, they come in packs. Sometimes they spook. If they're really spooky, then cast your corn a bit further away from them. Well, another fish has gone quiet now on the lake in general. The tench are really, really cautious. But uh, we just had a real slow take on one of Dad's rods. He was just putting out a lob worm on the other one. And uh, I think it, it got us weeded up a bit. So it's, sorry, apologies for the reel. That would be my, my father's <laughs> reel. Jesus, I think it's a carp. I've got him, but I've got half a tree as well. Because you see all the weed they're burying in, can't yeah, you? Yeah, that's like sort of pond weed. And there's the, what are you using, a pop-up? A pop-up there with... Uh, pop-up, fake corn. One fake. In a bag. And two in a bag with some, uh, those little squettings, four mils. There you go. Let's have a look at him. Another nice fish. Right? Yeah, four lovely pound fish. colours on this one. That's a four pounder. There we go. Another fine tench. I seem to be on tench form today. Yeah. Good fish. Good fish. Things have slowed down, so it's nice to actually get a fish when, th when times are tough. I think we'll stick it out a few more hours and then uh, see if we can maybe get one or two more. Uh, can you see the clarity of this water? Off it goes. Awesome. Well, we've given it the old totally awesome uh, 10 minute warning. That went down to a five minute warning. And we then we just said, look, next fish, if we get one, we'll just pack up early. And the rod steamed off. And I think I've got my second carp of the day. I'm pretty sure it's a common. But we've had a brilliant session. I've had uh, four tench, five tench, I think. Two Six. Carp. You had two on the bag. Yeah. And you've had what? F opposite. You've had about uh, four or five. The carp opposite. Four and carp and one tench. So this is a nice scaly one. Well, there we go. Proves putting a little bit of feed in every now and then. Definitely pays off. It's been an awesome little session, only a few hours really, and uh, you've got a lovely marked common here, golden common. And uh, yeah, so just get those pellets out, feed little and often, and keep at it. It's basically the same as that other Graham did with the big carp, wasn't That's it? That's it, yeah. Same yeah, principle, concentrating the bait. Mm -hmm.